What's up guys, it's McNulty here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a very busy Empires and Puzzles. We've got all sorts of offers, we've got all sorts of summons and events going on. Um, and today we have had the opening of two new events. So we've got the Covenant Summon and we've just got the Magic Tower, which is opened up and brought with them both um, a couple of brand new heroes. So we're going to go ahead and start with the Covenant Summon heroes. These are the ones, these are the most exciting ones, to be fair. Um, and look at that guy. I mean, they look just incredible. Um, so we're going to go ahead and have a look at them today. So let's start with the two new heroes. So we've got this guy, Ferris. So Ferris is looking ghostly. Um, he is a nature hero of the rogue class. Fantastic. Um, and this is a new family. So this is the construct family. So members of this family have a construct core. Interesting. And the construct cores charged each time this character receives damage from normal attacks or special skills. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sure they're going to tell us what this core does in a second. But for now, that is just, it sounds amazing. Um, the passive. So the construct core of this character is a corrosive core. The corrosive core activates each time this character's special skills cast. All right. Um, all enemies receive corrosive poison for three turns with a fully charged corrosive core. Uh, the corrosive poison deals 124 poison damage and lowers the target's mana generation by 13% each turn. That's a lot. Okay, the poison damage is scaled by the amount of charge in the core. All charge is exhausted when the core is activated. Man, this is just insane. Um, so it says here that Construct Core is charged each time he receives damage from normal attacks or special skills. Um, and this says the core activates each time he casts his special skill. So to be clear, the core is going to charge um, every time he receives damage. If the core is fully charged, um, then it's going to deal 124 poison damage and it's going to lower their target's mana generation by 13% each turn. Now, it says all enemies receive this poison damage for three turns. Um, so even when it says the targets, um, that's that looks like it's going to be all enemies. So that is a really cool effect and it could be pretty devastating. Now, let's look at this guy's stats. So we're looking at nearly 900 attack, 891 attack, 883 on the defense, which again is absolutely massive, and 1728 on the health. So he's pretty sturdy, this guy, Ferris. Um, even though he looks like he's about to fall apart, he, he's pretty solid, this guy. Um, that attack stat is just brilliant. Now, his special skill is Corroding Cutlass. He's running at average speed, and he deals 360% damage to the target and nearby. So an equal amount hit three hero um, with a pretty high damage. That's 360% is quite a bit. Um, the target and nearby enemies then receive 480 bleed damage over three turns. Again, that's quite a bit, and it should scale with limit breaks and emblems. Yeah, that goes all the way up to 651 bleed damage over three turns. So with limit breaks, you're getting over 200 bleed damage a turn. Pair him up with a hero like Matilda, and that's going to be doubled. I'm loving Matilda at the moment, by the way. She's just one of the most amazing heroes. I really underestimated her initially, but she's fantastic um, for enhancing specials like this that do deal dot damage. Um, and then the target and nearby enemies are going to get minus 60% defense against nature for three turns. So a fantastic special, really good hero against Titans, minus 60% defense is probably the highest elemental defense down I've ever seen, or I think we've ever seen in the game. That 360% damage to the target and nearby is massive, especially with that attack stat. I mean... Just look at it with second limit breaks, like 1,200 attack. That's massive. Um, and the bleed damage on top of that is excellent, and it makes for some interesting synergies. I mean, bleed damage is one of those little bit more rare um, damage over time effects, and there's no sort of immunity to bleed damage like with the... Um, 
With the uh, gargoyles, there's no immunity to the bleed damage, um, as well as sand damage. So yeah, bleed and sand damage are the ones that you're going to be able to to take up against those gargoyle heroes, and you're not going to have to worry about them. So to start off with, we have an amazing, amazing hero here. So yeah, congrats if you guys do manage to grab Ferris. He's going to be absolutely excellent, and he'll fit in really well um, on an attack team. Um, I think he'd be great on defense as well, you know, given that um, corrosive charge mechanic and the reduction in mana generation that he gives. He also gets the ailment immunity ether talent, which I'm sort of starting to find is one of the best ones because he just gets that uh, resistance to any status ailments for six turns at the start of battle, and that can be extremely useful. Um, the way things are going at the moment in the current meta is very much towards status ailments. So yeah, fantastic hero. Now let's move on before I talk too much. Now. We've got this other guy. <laughs> he looks cool, man. Um, so another nature hero, um, interestingly enough, of the Druid class. And he is also of the Construct family. So we are not going to go over that again because he gets the Construct core. And that's going to be the same as we just had um, with Ferris. So for Hall Stone, as you can see, he is hauling himself around. He's a massive stone. Um, there is a slightly different passive, uh, so his core is a repair core, so we had a poison or corrosive core with Ferris. The repair core, uh, when fully charged, will boost the health of all allies by 25%. Wow. Um, the healing scales and the amount of charge the core has, all charge is exhausted when the core is activated. That's amazing. So um, when he casts his special skill, depending on how much charge you've got in his core, um, he can boost health by 25% for all allies. Fantastic. I'm not sure which one I prefer, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but yeah, this is a really good skill. Um, and it looks like it goes alongside him because he's quite defensive. Now, if we switch the max power preview off for Hallstone, uh, stats-wise, we're looking at 760 on the attack, 978 on the defense, wow, and 1866 on the health, so super survivable. Um, he's going to stick around for literally forever, and it's going to be almost impossible to kill this guy. If we look at the limit breaks, look at that, like 2,500 health? <laughs> Are you joking that is incredible and then the defense up ether talent as well again that's one of my favorites just because it just activates right from the start it makes the hero that much more difficult to, to kill um and yeah that's an amazing ether talent for him um the attack stat doesn't really need to be either here or there uh, unless he's dealing some damage but we'll see in just a sec so his special skill is the bag of necessities which is what he's carrying by the looks of it he's got a shield a sword uh like a mattress or sleeping bag and a full-on tent like probably got like the kitchen sink in there as well by the looks of it um but his special skills running at average speed um and this is interesting so each ally receives buffs based on their current health so he's 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 buffing his own team basically if they've got full hp then the ally will get plus 50% attack for three turns, plus 30% defense for three turns, um, and that's at full HP. So an attack increase of 50% and defense of 30%. If they have above or equal to 50% HP, uh, then the ally gets plus 50% for three turns, and the ally gets plus 34% mana generation for three turns. All right, so uh, we're swapping out the attack for a defense boost, and we're swapping out the defense for a mana boost. Uh, that's if they don't quite have full HP. Now, if they're below 50% HP, we'd expect this to be probably the best one, um, but we'll see. The ally regenerates 810 HP over three turns. That's a pretty decent regeneration. It's about 300 a turn. And the ally gets plus 50% for defense for three turns. And the ally counterattacks with 130% of the damage received for three turns. Wow. So um, it's an interesting hero. Um, but I 
don't think that he's going to be as impactful as he sort of seems at first glass because, glance um, because he's doing a lot, but um, he's not really doing that much at the same time. So he is super survivable, um, but at full HP or above or equal to 50 HP, he's not giving any healing. So the even though there's increased defense, the allies can still be taken out. He is increasing the mana generation, which, uh, I mean, it's all right. That's probably the one that you're more likely to get him to, to cast. Um, but even, you know, the last one where they're below 50% HP, that regeneration of 810 over three turns, it's not going to be enough to get you guys out of a sticky situation, um, even with the increased defense um, and the counterattack that can just be dispelled. So unfortunately and i really want to like this guy because he looks incredible um aside from the bonkers stats i'm not a huge fan of this hero so a bit of a disappointment after what we looked at first um but that is what we've got so we've got hallstone and we've got ferris those are the two new heroes that are in this covenant summon uh, we'll just make sure that i didn't miss anybody out uh, because I don't want anyone to feel left out, you know, I mean, that's what I'm all about. Let's not leave any man behind, so, or monster. Um, right, now, moving on, the tower summon. Now, the last magic tower, we had some absolutely amazing new heroes introduced into the portal. Uh, this guy, probably, to be fair, wasn't one of the ones I liked the most, um, but certainly Ray, um, I was lucky enough to pull and um, Willow, who I've got as well, and um, this one who I didn't get, Camilla. Uh, they've all been really, really great additions to the Magic family. Um, and there's been a much talked about this passive, obviously here where there's a negative 5% mana generation stack. And if the special's fully charged, it's two stacks. That's been talked about a lot. And there's been a lot of uh, thrown around with the nerf word. But you know what? There's some other extremely overpowered heroes in this game, and I don't think that these heroes need a nerf because their special skills, are, while they are amazing, uh, they do take a little bit of synergy and working out. Now, we have a new hero in here, Becky. And Becky is a dark hero, and Becky is basically the five-star version of Lucy, um, but we'll get to that in just a second. So, she is of the cleric class, Fantastic class, the talent for this, the mana shield as a chance to resist maggot, well, maggot, 35% <laughs> chance to resist negative mana effects, sorry, and effects that prevent the use of special skills. So really, really good defensive class. Um, she is of the magic family. So you get a bonus of a 50, 75 or 100% chance to cast plus 5% mana generation stack on a random ally when they cast their special skill. This can get you out of a sticky situation and it certainly has helped me many times. Um, Melina is one of the ones that you just, I mean, that th th this just goes so really well for because you often use her at her first charge. Um, but yeah, just remember that additional 5% mana generation can get you out of that sticky situation. She gets the amazing stack, <laughs> which is the negative 5% mana generation stack. Um, and obviously if the special's fully charged, they get up, uh, they get two stacks, so minus 10% mana generation, and the stacks can go up to 50% or negative 50%, so 10 stacks. Her art is a bit understated. I'm not a huge fan of this. <laughs> she just looks like she just came straight out of Harry Potter. Um, although I think that's probably what they're going for, I don't know. Um, I think some of the other magic heroes just look a lot better. Um, but anyway, that's just personal preference. Um, her passive is a health recovery. So when she casts her special, she has a 50% chance to recover 15% health for all allies. It, it's a pretty decent passive. I think these magic heroes do have some of the best passives in the game. Um, and obviously if the special is fully charged, the chance is 100%. So let's move on to stats. So without the max power preview, 881 on the attack, really good. 894 on the defense, again, excellent. And 1602 on the health, so really good stats. 
Um, but then, I mean, I'm saying really good stats, and we've just had the Phantom of the Opera with like 940 team power, and his stats were ridiculous. So I think we're going to be seeing, I mean, this probably becoming the new norm. Anyways, her special skill is the Wand of Mana Control. Now, she has the two charges, so she's on the magic charge. Uh, basically, the first charge happens at just faster than very fast speed, so you're going to need two tile matches. And then the second charge happens with about four uh, tile matches, so at like a slow, relatively slow, um, almost very slow speed. Um, but you can get it up to 12 tiles with the relatively low mana troop or magic troop. So, her first charge, she will deal 350% damage to the target, and each time the target activates their special skill during three turns, the mana of all other enemies is reduced by 15%. This is important. So this is a great control skill. Uh, what you want to do with this one is you want to target a hero who's just about ready to fire off their special, tile dump, within the next three turns, and then the mana will be reduced. Apologies for the interruption there, guys. This is what happens when you make videos with your cell phone, is that people call you, and even when you've got the Do Not Disturb turned off, it still comes through. Anyways, as I was saying, um, the great thing about Charge 1 um, is that it makes her an excellent control hero. What you basically want to do is you want to target a hero where they're just about ready to fire their special, tile dump into them within three turns, and when they do fire off, they're just going to be reducing the mana of all of their um, allies by 15%. And that is not nothing, um, because if they cast their special again within the three turns, somehow that's another 15%, and it does take a bit of time to get back up. So it's a great control skill, uh, just a mana cut to all. Um, and then second mana charge, she's going to increase the mana of all allies by 10%, which is like X Nolfod X esque, um, but it's not a huge amount. 10% increased mana is not that much. Um, it does pair up with a family bonus, etc., um, but that's not really the main part of this. The main part is that for the next five turns, this character deals 250% damage to all enemies each time any other ally casts their special skill. So she is like a slow speed guardian hippo, um, but she is able to do that for five turns. So if you do manage to get her to a second charge, that's where the pain is going to be. Because when you fire her off, it is just going to cause absolute mayhem. Every single hero that fires a special for the next five turns, I mean, you'd probably want to bring some man magic heroes in with her because they're all firing off at very fast speed, but you're going to be able to decimate the team because 250% to all enemies every time they fire after that, and it lasts for five turns. And here's the kicker as well. So Guardian Hippo is running at fast speed, but Guardian Hippo can be copied um, by heroes like Lord Loki, and he, I've found, is an excellent co uh, counter to Guardian Hippo. With Becky, she can't be copied because you're going to be copying the first part of her special. So that is another reason to want this hero. And to be honest, I haven't finished leveling Lucy yet, um, but I think she might be a little bit underpowered. Uh, with Becky, she's just hitting all of the right notes in terms of what you want from a hero like this. Um, at charge one, she's going to be able to get you out of a sticky situation. At charge two, she's going to decimate the enemy team and win you the battle. So yeah, a fantastic hero. I think we've got two absolutely brilliant heroes that are in these two portals. Um, so we've got Ferris, who's insane. Uh, we've got this guy who's cute, but not great. <laughs> And then we have the Bell of the Ball, uh, Becky. So yeah, congrats to you guys if you do manage to pull either Ferris or Becky. They are excellent heroes. Uh, please drop us a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you all again in the next video. Bye for now.